it's Valerie from Stampin' with Valerie and if you didn't already know I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States and I love coming on here and showing you all fantastic projects so I'm going to share this with my group while I talk about my um, fantastic event that is coming up and the deadline is Thursday and it is going to be so much fun. We are actually, some of the products we are using today are gonna to be incorporated into this Wonder of Christmas virtual stamping event. Now, I am holding this online with my friend Ingrid. She is also a teammate, and it is gonna be on October 24th. We're gonna be live from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're gonna come on and off. We're not, not gonna be live for the whole five hours, but we're gonna come in between those between those times, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., we're gonna do a bunch of different little live videos and share some other fantastic things like scrapbook pages, um, gift wrapping ideas, and we're gonna have prize patrol, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have prizes, and the more people that we get to sign up, the bigger the prizes get to be. So we really would love to have you join us. I will include the link when I post the photos of this later on my page so if you want to join it we would really really love to have you so I just wanted to let you know about that real quick since it's the deadline is coming up so what we're gonna do today is a scrapbook page I love it when Stampin' Up! shares a scrapbook page with us so we are gonna make this 12 by 12 scrapbook page and it's gonna be super fun and we use the wishes and wonder stamp set along with the Wonder of the Season Memories and More cards. So if you haven't seen these yet, these are gorgeous. So we're gonna get those out in just a second. I just wanna let you have one more quick look at this before we get started. All right, so what we're gonna do is start by getting all of our papers cut down to what we need. Now look at this flocked vellum. Now this is just one print in the plush poinsettia specialty paper and you get let me see how many sheets you get I think six sheets yeah you get six sheets two of each design let me show you that catalog photo because this is the only sheet I have of it but you get the poinsettia the leaves holly leaves and berries and then this gorgeous trellis like looking mosaic I don't know what you would call it <laughs> design but it's gorgeous and it would be super pretty to use so we're gonna have to cut that down in just a second but before that we'll start with a piece of real red cardstock 12 by 12 then we are going to cut um, our whisper white and at first I'm just gonna cut it down to 11 by 11 and then we're gonna see if it looks if it looks like that's the right size because they don't give us measurements when they give us these projects usually so this one definitely does not have any measurements, so we are just kind of guessing. So we'll cut it to 11 by 11 to start with because it is 12 by 12. So we definitely have to cut it down so we can layer and then we'll cut down that flocked paper. And I didn't want to cut into the flocked paper first because I don't want to ruin that. That's the only sheet I have. All right. So yes, that's perfect, 11 by 11. So this piece is 10 by 10. And you can just tell that by the photo, just by how much it goes in. And actually it might be nine and a half by nine and a half, but we're gonna go 10 by 10 and see how it looks. And then these little leftover pieces would be great for using for cards or for another scrapbook page. So hello everyone who's watching, Diana and Sharon, and I see Eleanor's on here. So hello to all of you. I hope you are having a fantastic day today. So this one, oh yes, perfect. 10 by 10, I think that's perfect. Like I say, it might be nine and a half by nine and a half, but we're not gonna cut another half inch off. We're just gonna leave it just like that. So basically what we have to do is just get these layered together first. Mm -hmm and then we can start with the rest of the project. And I'm not gonna use a ton of it. I'm not gonna go down the whole side of these with the adhesive because once you get them in your albums, they're gonna be in there and they're gonna look good anyway, right? 
They're, it's going to hold the pages down. It's You don't have to worry about this coming apart like a card in the mail. Because once you get it in that album, it's already... Like I said, that plastic sheet is just going to make sure things don't come apart. And especially using this Stampin' Seal Plus, it's not going to come apart anyway. So all I'm going to do for this, I'm not going to do around the edges on this. I'm just going to do like three little strips in the center because this is going to be covered. Because that adhesive will show through that vellum. Of course, not as much on this just because it's got all that gorgeous flocking on it. And actually, you can't even see that through there. So that's fantastic. Can't even see it. Yay! Perfect! Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's raining all day, Sharon. Yes, I have enjoyed my day. It has been a sunny day. It was only like 70 here today. So I was super excited. It wasn't really hot. We didn't have to deal with a bunch of... It wasn't really humid. All right, so these are the wonder of the season. Memories and more cards. Now, this is only half a pack. If you join that our virtual event, you're gonna get a half a pack of these. So you're gonna get this many members and more cards plus other supplies. So we need this one. We need the tree. I kind of sorted these out a little bit earlier. We're gonna use this one. And we're gonna need some of these stickers. Look at these fantastic stickers. If you haven't seen the stickers that come in here, and they're like a, a thick sticker, like almost like a cardstock sticker. So they're really great. I just think they're fantastic. And we're gonna be using some of these numbers now. Do not laugh at me when I put the year on this scrapbook page because I found a picture that I'm gonna put in it. I, d I actually got out my photos this morning and dug through to find Christmas pictures because I am so far behind on my scrapbooking. It is not even funny. So you can keep, you can, you can laugh, it's okay. But don't, but no judging, no judging, okay? You can laugh, but no judging when you see how far behind I am. All right, so we are going to be using some gold embossing powder and the Versamark stamping pad. We're going to do some heat embossing. And for this one, this little card, you can see they're double-sided. But on this side, it's got um, the partridge in a pear tree lyrics on it. And so what they stamped on this one or embossed on this one were these fantastic holly leaves. So I'm going to get open that a little bit and I'm gonna get our other two stamps because we're also gonna use the deer and this made in the North Pole. So we need this one. Actually, I need to cut this one in half because they only used half of this. So the big cards are six by four and the small cards are three by four. So I'm just gonna cut this so it's three by four and we're using this back side of it. And then on a small piece of vellum, I've got just a little piece here. We're gonna stamp on that. So what I wanna do is stamp them all and then sprinkle them all with the embossing powder first. And then we can do the heat embossing part of it. So for, <laughs> I'm just a mess. Um, so for the vellum, we need to stamp the Made in the North Pole. And of course, that's hard for you to see, but once I sprinkle that embossing powder on it, you'll be able to see it. And I'm gonna try to get most of it back in here so I don't have too much just laying out. Set that down there just so it's out of the way. We'll go ahead and stamp the deer. And then we'll stamp that first card that I showed you. And we'll do that one last, only because we have to stamp those holly leaves several times and this, this one and the first one, we only had to stamp once. So, you know, you don't wanna have like this all setting here and then you've got to sprinkle powder everywhere and get it all over. All right, so let's get this one stamped good. Do any of you have this stamp set? This is the Wishes and Wonder stamp set. And it all they all go together in that Wonder of the Season bundle. I think it's called Wonder of the Season. I hope that's what it's called. But you get the North Pole dies. Um, if you buy the whole bundle, oh my gosh, a whole clump came out and then I added more. That can be cleaned up later. I'm just gonna put the lid on my Versamark. Ah, set that over there. And then we can heat emboss. 
like heat embossing is one of my favorite things to do because it's so, I always say this, but it's so satisfying because you emboss and then you watch that powder melt and it's just awesome. All right, I gotta move these apart just a little bit. Otherwise I'm gonna end up blowing the paper all over the place because that little heat emboss or the heat gun, trying to find my take your pick tool but I don't see it right here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna use my scissors instead to hold it down. So I'm gonna turn this on, let it start heating up for a second before I actually start the heat embossing. But oh my gosh, if you've never heat embossed, you need to do this because it really is a fantastic technique and it will add so much to your projects. And I don't do it often enough. I should do it more. Yes, it's not quite hot enough yet. My cord's stuck. There we go. All right, <laughs> I look like I'm holding a cup of tea with it, like the way my pinky was poking out. Love that gold embossing powder because it's so shiny when you get everything embossed. And you can burn yourself with this heat tool, so you have to be very careful with it. Turn that down while I move this over. Now, vellum, if you overheat it, will burn. So you have to just be careful when you heat the embossing powder on the vellum. So turning it down just a little bit so it's not blowing as hard on there is a good technique for when you're doing your vellum. And only heat it just until it's melted. Don't overheat it for sure. And then with all embossing, you have to let it set for a few seconds, cool down because that embossing powder is still sticky. So you have to be really, really careful with it. All right, hold on. I've got a little bit of extra powder there. I'm just gonna flick that off. And then we can start this one. I gotta move this over here. I'm gonna, it's gonna blow away. It already started actually blowing away while I was doing that. All right, so now I'll turn it back off. And if your paper does this little curling thing like this, something that you can do, and I'll show you in just a second, is just flip it over to the other side and heat the other side. But these are gonna lay pretty flat once I put adhesive on them anyway, so I'm not too worried about them. Now, if I really needed them to be super duper flat and I would, you know, heat the other side, but look at that, it kind of laid itself back down. Look how pretty that is once you put that embossed image on there. It just totally changes those little cards. Now we're going to take this little guy here, our little made in the North Pole, and we're going to punch it out with the one and a half inch punch. Now the one and a half inch punch is the actual perfect size for this little thing. So now that, look at that, isn't that pretty? I love that gold. Raise your hand if you love heat embossing. It's so much fun. All right, so the only thing that I didn't, I didn't grab another piece that goes on here, but we'll find those in just a minute. Right now, we're just gonna lay these out kind of the way the photo has them. And then we'll add adhesive in just a minute. Now, I'm normally not one for just putting one photo on a page, but I really loved this layout. So this is my son and our dog. Well, he's no longer here. He's no longer with us. This was from 2008. Again, that's the part where you get to laugh at me because I'm that far behind and you get to know I'm a real person. This is my life. I am behind by, um, I'm not even going to say how many years, but at least 12 because 2008 Christmas was 12 years ago. So <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the real number of years that I am behind. Now this kind of has to, the photo ends up overlapping just a little bit onto these. So I just want to move these around, get them kind of centered the way I want them. They kind of overlap each other a little bit in spots and then not in others or maybe that one kind of goes like that. But I want it to look centered. Does that kind of look centered or do I need to move up a little bit? I think I might need to move up just a little bit. I 
and I'm going to put the photo on to last anyway. I think this one kind of goes over both of these because that's where all of our all of my words that I write on there later are going to go. Which I'm probably not going to do that during this because I need to figure out what I'm writing on there. I don't even know. Again, I'm really far behind. So I have to like make another page to go with this because I have so many more photos from 2008 because like I said, I normally don't do just single photos on a page. So my next page is probably just going to be all photos. All right, that looks, that looks about right like that. All right. So I'm just going to take, and I don't know, I don't think they put, let's see, I'm not sure how well this is going to stick to the flocking. That's why I'm debating if I want to put dimensionals on these or if the stamp and seal plus will work so we're going to find out right now what works for this let's see if that actually sticks good oh yeah that sticks perfect the stamp and seal plus is perfect yay all right so i'm just putting like three little strips on there i'm like i said i'm not putting a ton of adhesive on here now this kind of goes over that one a little bit and I'm probably laying these all wrong again on the wrong angles, but that's all right. It's going to be just fine when we get done, right? At least I'm getting a scrapbook page done for 2008. That's all I got to say. I'm actually kind of excited about that, to be honest with you. And now the little, even though we did emboss that deer, this card goes over it a little bit. And that's how it actually is in their photo too. So I'm going to keep it like that where it kind of is overlapping. And this one is flat. And then I think they used another card and just cut it apart. I'm gonna show you the photo in just a second. I'm just gonna put a couple little strips on here to hold that photo in. Because I always think, well, what if I decide I will need to take this photo out for something? I never take the photos out once they're in there, but I always think I might. So I feel like I have to prepare for that anyway. All right, so in this photo, what they did was on that little card, they have some little pieces cut out, but you can't see it on this photo, but those little pieces had lines on them. So I'm gonna see if there's any of these that any of the sides had little Yes, this one, the Believe one, perfect. This is the one they used, yay. All right, I'm gonna slide this over just so I don't stick my trimmer right on top of that photo. And we're gonna cut this down. We're gonna cut that little Believe off from there, which could be used again for something else. We're gonna cut this bottom off. And then let's see how big this is. Actually, let's just go ahead and make it three inches, so then we can cut these all into one inch pieces. And then they trimmed the ends using the Banners Pick-A-Punch. So we'll just trim the ends using that Banners Pick-A-Punch. Love this punch. So we're just gonna slide that in. That's the biggest size you can use on this punch is the one inch. And just make sure it goes in there straight because sometimes you get them in there and they're crooked and then you end up cutting off a piece that you don't want to cut off. And Lord knows we don't need to mess that up. We need to keep everything as perfect as possible. Now I'm not going to stick these down yet, but they have these stuck down with um, dimensionals. So these are popped up a little bit. So when you make yours, just use dimensionals on it. And when I take a photo of it, I'm just going to take a photo of it without the dimensionals because I want to be able to write on these, like I said, and I just don't even know what I'm writing yet. Of course, I could just steal their words there, but it's not the same. <laughs> it wouldn't go with the same because they're outside in their photo and my son's inside in this photo. And of course, I need to make it personalized. So they just put them on here. They've already got the little lines on them. And you can just kind of 
you can angle them. You can actually put them anywhere you want, but they have them all right on this one. They must have made theirs smaller because theirs are much smaller than mine. So I'm going to throw one over here for now just so we have an extra. Now we need to put the year on there. So all we have to do are use these stickers. We've got our two. We'll steal a zero from that 10. We'll steal another zero from 20. And of course, and we'll grab an eight. Again, no judging. No judging, please. All right, hold on. Move it over just a little bit. I had it over a little too far. So 2008 for that. And then I think just a couple of little mini dimensionals on the back of that because they did have this popped up as well. And if you can't find you take your pick tool, just use your fantastic little scissors to grab those two little mini dimensionals. And if you put them underneath the N and the P, they're not, oh, they're still kind of visible. Let me see, maybe they put something else under theirs so or maybe they didn't pop these up. Oh no, they didn't pop these up. Ah, okay, hang on. Change of plans, we're gonna take those off. Change of plans. And they actually had them being held down by these numbers. So, oh, let me see if I can peel up my numbers. I can, just a little bit. At least the zeros will peel up just a little bit so I can slide it under. I'm gonna put just a little dab of adhesive right there. Poke my zeros back down, stick that back down. Ah, ta-da, yay! How cute is that? I love that. I love it when, like I said, when Stampin' Up! shares a scrapbook page because it helps me catch up on my scrapbooking because it forces me <laughs> to come on here and show you because I think they're so gorgeous. All right, so that is today's Update Tuesday. If you need these supplies, go to my store, valeriesmith.stampinup.net. You can order the package of Regals. I think it's Regals. Oh, I hope it's Regals. The one that has real red in it. Find the package that has real red 12 by 12. Grab a package of that. You can grab a package of the Whisper White 12 by 12. And of course, this lovely um, plush poinsettia specialty paper. That's what it's called, plush poinsettia. And then of course, the fantastic Wonder of the Season, Memories and More cards, and the Wishes and Wonder stamp set. Perfect project to get done. So I say go on there and order it now then you have it. You can get scrapbook pages ready for Christmas before Christmas even gets here. Don't be like me. Don't be doing from 2008. Do 2020. All right. Thank you for joining me. I will be back tomorrow night for One Card Wonder Wednesday with a really cute fall card for you all. So I hope you will join me for that. I truly appreciate you choosing me as your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I know there are a ton of demonstrators out there. But I'm so glad you have joined my Stampin' Up! community. Thank you, and I will see you tomorrow night. Bye.